Hello and welcome to National Focus. I'm your presenter, Moving Matthew. Thank you for joining us. Topping the headlines, Dominica joined the rest of its Commonwealth member countries in the observance of Commonwealth Day 2012. Prime Minister Skerritt goes on tour of the State College Expansion Project and the Dominica's Ministry of Health has captured the 2011 Surveillance Award from the expanded program on immunization. All these stories and more when National Focus returns. Why do we allow visitors to enjoy our island sites and attractions and we don't? Why do we allow visitors to grace our hotels and guest houses with their presence and we don't? Dominica is ours to enjoy as well. There is so much to do and experience which will help us Dominicans to appreciate our nature island even more than we already do. After all, it has given us so much. Why not return the favor and own it? Nafta noon Dominice. I am Felix Henderson. And I am Dominica. Are you? Together we build, together we strive. We see it all on your government information service, Channel 7. This is the Government Information Service, bringing you all that you need to know about all that's happening in your country's development. GIS, you and your channel. Welcome back. Time now for the details of the news. Dominica joined the rest of its Commonwealth Associate Member countries on Monday, March 12, in the observance of Commonwealth Day 2012. The theme for this year's observance is Connecting Cultures, Celebrating Our Commonwealth. To mark the occasion locally, a special celebratory service organized by the Ministry of Education was held at the Arc House of Culture involving schools from across the country. The service was attended by Dominica's Head of State, His Excellency Dr. Nicholas Liverpool, Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, members of his cabinet, as well as other specially invited guests. His Lordship Gabriel Marzia delivered a scripture reading taken from Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 to 27. This was followed by reflection, which brought into sharp focus the need for all Commonwealth countries to work together in unison. The essence of what is communicated in this text is the value of unity and a commonality of purpose that is proper to our existence as a diversity of peoples. In truth, the Commonwealth comprises 54 nations, uniting more than 2 billion people. Today's celebration serves to underscore the nature of the existence as a unity in diversity. But the highlight of Monday's service was the presentation of the Queen's Commonwealth Day message by His Excellency the President. The monarch in her message described how the Commonwealth has a wealth of diversity. Connecting cultures, or Commonwealth theme this year, encouraged us to consider the special opportunities we have as members of this unique gathering of nations to celebrate an extraordinary cultural tapestry that reflects our many individual and collective identities. The Commonwealth treasures and respects this wealth of diversity. Connecting cultures is more, however, than observing others and the ways in which they express themselves. This year, our Commonwealth Focus seeks to explore how we can share and strengthen the bond of Commonwealth citizenship we already enjoy by using our cultural connections to help bring us even closer together as family and friends across the globe. Bidding prayers by Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, Honorable Peter Seja, Honorable Justina Charles, a teacher and representatives from various schools also formed part of the Commonwealth Day ceremony. Together they prayed for the Commonwealth, the nation, the youth, administrators, parents and the teachers. The morning service was punctuated by artistic and musical presentations from various primary and secondary schools. The presentations sought to demonstrate how as a Commonwealth, countries connect 
through diverse cultures. We now present you with a few snippets of this morning's presentations by some of the schools. Commonwealth Day is celebrated every year throughout the Commonwealth in a variety of ways. The centerpiece of the celebrations is the Commonwealth Day observance in London. The Prime Minister Honor Roosevelt Scout is pleased with the progress of works on the expansion of the Dominica State College. The Dominica leader led a team of cabinet officials and the management staff and students of the college to the project site on Monday. Clearly the, the, the structures are more expansive than one would have imagined based on the, on, on the drawings and the conceptual designs. And as they go along, we've been asking them to do additional things for us and they have consented to do additional things. The Dominica leader, a former lecturer at the college, told reporters that the loan of $30 million from the Chinese government for the expansion of the institution is monies well spent. We, we can't continue to have our students in our premier institution. Um, in the second decade of the 21st century, uh, having to receive tuition in these um, buildings and so on. I mean, clearly we have to do better than that. And uh, this is why the government stands firm in its decision to acquire a loan from the government of China to construct this college. Despite the criticisms leveled at the institution, Prime Minister Scout says the Dominica State College has made significant progress. This college has helped in, in many regards um, to create greater access to our students to the point where every child in this country who meets the basic requirements to come in and who wants to be in college has a space at this college. And with the construction of the facility, we are on an onward match towards the acquisition of universal access to tertiary education insofar as uh, an associate degree is concerned. The Dominica leaders stress that the expansion was being developed for the Dominica's young leaders. We are building this for them. We are investing in the young people of this country and it's a commitment of the government and it's a commitment of the Dominica Labour Party um, in respect to advancements and investments in uh, our young people and for our young people. Meantime, President of the Dominica State College, Dr. Donald Peters, said the expansion will enhance the learning environment at that institution. What you will see is um, electronics, um, as the Minister just pointed out. We, we're going to be a Wi-Fi center. We have an agricultural center, probably the only institution in the Caribbean to have its own agricultural center because agriculture is our main industry. Um, we have access for the handicap. We have um, a whole new building. We're going to put a food court, which is enough of the... Um, um, the agricultural center so that our students have access to a food court similar to Ross. And uh, more importantly, we have created a lot more space for our students. So we'll have both of the campuses and we'll keep on moving left as we create new buildings. In Tuesday's newscast, we will bring you the reaction of students to the ongoing expansion of the Dominica State College. We will also bring you comments from Education Minister Honorable Peter Seja and Parliamentary Representative for the Rosenhoff constituency, Honorable Julius Timothy. 
In more news, President of the Caribbean Development Bank, Dr. Warren Smith, is encouraged by the positive impact that projects funded under, under the CDB's Special Development Fund and Basic Needs Trust Fund is having on the less fortunate in Dominica. Last week, a team of contributors from the Caribbean Development Bank were engaged in a tour of a number of projects across the country funded under the SDF-7. At the end of the tour, GIS News spoke to the President about the importance of the tour of the projects in Dominica. Every four years, contributors get together to review the performance of those, the use of those funds over the previous four years. What they do is go through the several different themes, thematic areas that were agreed at the beginning of the cycle to make a determination as to whether value of, for money has been received. We are at the point now where we are in the final year of SDF 7. So the pre preparations for SDF 8 begin approximately one year in advance of the commencement of SDF 8. Dominica has implemented some very important projects that have affected positively the lives of the poor and the disadvantaged in this country. Contributors, in our view, have a much better appreciation for the impact of our work utilizing the resources which they have contributed if they can see firsthand the work in action. Dr. Smith is heartened by the major transformations which has been made to the lives of the young and the elderly. We are leaving Dominica with a solid impression of the BNTF and CDB's Special, Deve Special Development Fund resources at work. We, have also, we are also leaving Dominica with documentation in film of the reaction of the people of Dominica to the work that the Special Development Fund has been doing here. And we're going to use that film, including what is being done by your own government information service, to prepare evidence in film for our contributors of what has been accomplished in this country. Some of the projects visited included the Point Michel C Defense Wall, the Social Center Rehabilitation Project in Rosu and Portsmouth, the Mao Senior Citizens Home, the Carib Territory Community Development Project, and the North End Marigot Water Supply. Dominica's Ministry of Health has captured the 2011 Surveillance Award from the expanded program on immunization of the Caribbean sub-region in recognition of excellent report. The award was presented to Dominica last month at the 20th Caribbean EPI Managers Meeting in Barbados. Dominica's EPI Manager and Senior Community Health Nurse Florestin Luis accepted the award. In a recent interview, Luis spoke about that meeting. Every year there is what we call the expanded program on immunization managers meeting where 30 countries from all across the region are represented. Since I'm the EPI manager, I represent Dominica. At that meeting, we look at our immunization program in all of the islands. We get a lot of information on various topics. For example, we looked at some new vaccines like the rotavirus and the pneumococcal conjugate vaccines as well as the HPV vaccines, that is the vaccine that we give to women, to young children before puberty. Okay, so that's some, just some of the topics that we covered at our meetings. We also look at our work plans for the year, because every year we are supposed to develop a work plan as to what we want to do with immunizations in our countries. Nurse Louis says Dominica's diligence in reporting cases of diseases on time and from all sites is what won the award. Every week, we are supposed to report to CARIC on time from all our sites as to the communicable diseases that we have circulating in our country. So we look at um, diseases such as the flu, for example, or other communicable diseases like acute diarrhea diseases or skin infections, all of those things. 
Some of those diseases are prevented by vaccination. So we also look at vaccine preventable diseases. And every week, whether we have cases or not, we have to report to CAREC on time that we have X number of cases or we have had no cases for the week. Lewis says she is elated that Dominica finally won first place because over the years, Dominica has won second and third. She urges healthcare providers to continue reporting and sending in samples in a timely manner. National epidemiologist Dr. Paul Ricketts, who is also head of the surveillance team, says it is a great honor for Dominica to be recognized for outstanding work in the EPI surveillance report. I think it's a wonderful um, recognition by the, the regional health community of the work that uh, is going on in Dominica with respect to disease surveillance. The National Public Health Surveillance and Response Team is a multi-sectoral, um, multidisciplinary team. The team comprises of um, members of pretty much all the departments in the Ministry of Health. Uh, plus partners from Agriculture, the Office of Disaster Management. And we meet every week uh, to monitor the trends and to respond to any health threats, including um, cases or potential cases related to vaccine preventable illness, which is what this particular award is for. Awards for the second and the third places went to Antigua and Barbuda and St. Martin, respectively. The award is furnished by the Pan American Health Organization, the World Health Organization, and CAREC. The Ministry of Tourism is pulling out all the stops for the upcoming West Indies versus Australia third test match in April. Honorable Ian Douglas, Minister for Tourism, says the Ministry of Tourism is committed to ensuring that Dominica is prepared to host such an event. The Ministry of Tourism and the Discover Dominica Authority are pleased to be associated with this venture. And as a collaborating partner through the Discover Dominica Authority, we'll endeavor to mobilize all our stakeholders, of course, in the DHTA, the Dominica Hotel and Tourism Association, to ensure that all the necessary requirements within our control are in place for this spectacular and important event. The Ministry will also engage all partners in an effort to enhance our tourism products to ensure that our visitors have a wonderful experience of what we have to offer while on the island and of course to attract future games and future visitors. Douglas says this event has the ability to increase revenue among service providers. However, it's imperative that these providers deliver quality services to visitors. This five-day event will provide an opportunity for stakeholders to engage in revenue-generating activities. But the extent of, of our success will depend on the standard of our products and the level of services that we offer. And we know that we always have challenges in the area of service and we always when we get the opportunity try to implore all of Dominicans especially those involved in the service sector to ensure that the services that we offer to our visitors while they are on island are the best that they can be. Meantime, former Chief Executive Officer of the West Indies Cricket Board, Dr. Donald Peters, has called on all nationals to support the April 23 to 27, 2012 encounter between the West Indies and Australia. Dr. Peters made the appeal during a live cricket discussion at the GIS studios on Saturday. It should be exciting. First time you see some of the top players in the world again. You just saw the Indians. Now we've seen the South Africans, now the Australians. They're very pompous and they believe they can beat everybody. So they come with an athlete. But they have, they have the right to think yeah, like yeah, that. No, that's I mean, fine. They've been playing I mean, good cricket. They're good athletes. And uh, certainly people should come out in all their new dandan and their new clothes and come to the park <laughs> bring the beer and have a good time, a whole week of festival. Meantime, President of the Dominica Cricket Association, Emmanuel Nanton, says preparations are in high gear for the hosting of the cricket encounter. He believes it will be an exciting encounter and nationals should turn out in large numbers. Cricket is about entertainment. It's business, entertainment. We have two uh, great teams coming out there. We have the Australia team, rich with talent, rich with cricket in history, coming up against uh, the West Indies team, a team that is young and uh, upcoming coming out to clash out here, given the best support that they possibly can get anywhere uh, in the world, anywhere in the Caribbean, and that's the support of you and of me. Uh, and we are going to go out there 
and give that support we're going to we have a lovely stadium great outfield lovely pitch carry it through nicely the bongs turns you know so we're going to have an excellent uh, opportunity it will be just after lent lapo cabrit the party stand uh, is on they have the contracts uh, already we have our lapo cabrit the stilt workers uh, uh, ask mm -hmm. that they want to be part the who and the, the stilt workers the people oh, the, the boboas yeah the boboas yeah they ask us to be part of the event uh, and activity as well. We have some cultural groups who want to be, be yeah, part, of, part of the activity as well. We have uh, uh, the steam <laughs> band that's good to be uh, uh, out there. There's a group that's interested in, in, in doing a, a cricket board lame uh, on the bayfront uh, during uh, the evening after, uh, after cricket. So it's going to be a wonderful, spectacular week for Dominica. And that's the English segment of the news. Mark Wilson St. Louis joins us next with the Creole Highlights. Hello tout le monde, bienvenue à cette nouvelle en créole, non moins c'est McPherson saint louis Premièrement, le premier ministre honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, tes chefs en délégation cabinet qui visite Dominica State College Jardinier. Délégation là, t'es bien aussi voué, hors président college saint louis Dr. Donald Peters, travailleur et étudiant college là. Délégation là, tape en trop à ces l'occasion bâtiment neuf qui a bâti à présent. Le gouvernement Dominique tape en loun et puis l'anté oui bien bas pour bâtir le projet cela. Quand même si l'homme ministre de l'éducation, honorable Peter Saint-Jean, qui était officier qui visitait l'occasion là, le gouvernement Dominique a mis l'éducation qualité par jeunesse en pays là. Le gouvernement ça a un plan pour éduquer tout Dominique. Et State College, l'argent là qui nous a mis en State College véritablement, a dit vraiment. Le gouvernement a sérieux contre délivrer la qualité de l'éducation en Dominique. Uh, nous avons fait un lot de différents investissements tout en Dominique. Mais ce que nous avons fait ici, il a représenté le plus gros investissement que le gouvernement a fait. Et nous avons fait un peu de ça, c'est un investissement qui a touché tout le Dominique, tout le monde. Puisque là, nous avons éduqué les gens, ce que nous avons fait, nous avons déclaré l'argent en l'ignorance et aussi pauvreté, malte. Puisque si vous éduquez au monde, vous avez une opportunité là pour sortir de la malte, pauvreté et pour éduquer quoi, pour grandir en, en temps pour venir. Le ministre Saint-Jean a créé assez tout bien pour prendre l'avantage de l'institution de la l'opération. Autant fois, euh, avant, nous avons nous les opportunités et nous pas tenir. Actuellement, le gouvernement nous a pris les opportunités. Nous avons créé un sujet pour prendre l'opportunité et éduquer les gens, puisque nous avons un gouvernement, nous avons un second position, nous avons allé et c'est ce qui nous pour prendre place. Nous. Et ça, c'est l'opportunité pour nous vraiment dire à dans un manier pour, pour dire que nous avons pris et nous avons avec le développement dominique. A notre nouvelle, Dominique Bonché et puis plusieurs d'autres pays vont l'atteint en observance journée Commonwealth Jardin. Activité était organisée et puis en célébration religieuse en Arawak House of Culture en Wozo, qui était célébré par Monseigneur Wozo Gabriel Malzin et Dr. Norville Joseph Hort, l'église méthodiste en Wozo. Comme la coutume, président His Excellency Dr. Nicholas Liverpool, les messages Hort Wen en Angleterre. Premier ministre Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, ministre d'éducation Honorable Peter Saint-Jean, ministre de jeunesse Honorable Justina Charles et étudiants, les messages Saukwe Bening Prayers. Plusieurs étudiants, différents écoles, font présentation de bagaille talent, car commémorer bagaille à Commonwealth. Quand on passe les boissons salam, ils ont organisé une session parlement où la jeunesse qui expecte pour participer à Madding. Femme là pour célébration là, c'est connecter à culture. Ça c'est à connecter à faire culture. 54 pays vont la tête, c'est même Commonwealth et puis Wen l'Angleterre qu'on a chef Finalement, ministre Commodité, bien plaisir pour te lancer le projet Dominica Coalition of Services. Si l'on ministre Commodité, Honorable Dr. John Colin McIntyre, Dominique a donc position pour exportation de services et qui produit différents bagages. Il y a un autre projet, um, même des années encore, Collision of Services. Avec ça, c'est un projet nous avons regardé quoi, toute qualité de service, service à Dominique, comme si des architectes, ingénieurs, um, n'importe quoi, um, 
mon qui a la loi, c'est le lawyer, c'est le qualité de ça. Toute qualité de service professionnel à Dominique pour ce so, so projet ça, nous avons gardé le code. Comment nous avons gardé, nous avons un groupe de PIO, nous avons plus fort, nous avons une nous, 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 nous expertise ça à l'autre pays pour nous mettre des codes dans notre plateforme. Et bien, tout ce qui est gel bien, et puis même ces partnerships là, nous avons parlé de à CARICOM, à OECS, et puis EU, et dans d'autres pays qui a passé. Monsieur, mesdames, ça c'est tout pour nous belle en créole pour à présent. Non, moi c'est Macpherson Saint Louis. Au revoir. When we come back, we'll bring you a few upcoming events and the government notices. Do stay with us. Hello, I am Lennox Sunny Church. I am Dominica. Are you? A time now for a few government notices. The following individuals or the personal representatives must present themselves at the Ministry of Tourism and Legal Affairs to the Solicitor General, Mrs. Wynand Adrian Roberts, for signing of documents as soon as possible. Fitzroy Muller, Union Estate, Rosalind Clavia John, Shimenef Point Michel, Phyllis Francis and Gregoire Samuel, Roland Graham, Mathias Luis, Patrick and Rufin Pierre, Oliver Walsh, Nikki Esprit, Desmond Leeford of Focolay, Maureen Frank, Heather Germain, and Blanche Reiner of Ravin Bernard, Jean Baptist and Glenda Greenaway of Yanda, Matilia Monica Prosper and Marina Roy of Kinfield, Anthony Telemark, Julian Prevo, Philsbert Labasseur, St. Clair Dangleman, Henry Dubick, and Joseph Barnes of Casabros. Calvin Wyke and Janet St. Louis of Stock Farm, Gertrude Thomas and Honest Roy of Chance. For any further clarification of details, Mrs. Wine and Adrian Roberts can be contacted at 266-3378. Up next, your tip of the day. I am Ian Douglas, the Minister of Tourism. I am Dominica. Are you? We now bring you five steps to reduce joint pain. One. Eat to relieve joint pain. Food can't prevent or cure achy joints, but certain nutrients not only enhances muscle and bone strength, they also take a bite out of joint pain. Increased intake of foods rich in omega-3, fatty acids, ache-easing polyphen oils, and vitamins C, K, and D. Two, move to improve pain. Resist the urge to hit the couch when your joints hurt. Move through the pain instead. 3. Watch your weight. If you're overweight, ask your doctor for a safe weight loss plan. 4. Work with your doctor. Ask your primary care physician if a specialist can help you with your joint pain. And listen to your body. Pace yourself and avoid activities that aggravate your joint pain, such as running marathons, lifting heavy objects, or kneeling all day to pull weeds. And that's National Focus. As usual, we invite your suggestions or comments. Feel free to drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or you can visit our website at news.gov.dm. On behalf of the entire news production team, I'm Mervyn Matthew. Thank you for watching.